Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the spectroscopic term symbols for the D3 configuration. This is where we have three electrons in the same set of D orbitals as, for example, the 3D orbitals. An important example of an ion that has this particular configuration is chromium plus 3. As we recall in its valence shell, it has a 3D3 configuration. Our next step is to determine exactly how many microstates are present. So as recall, remember that we have the number of spaces divided by the number of electrons factorial times the number of holes factorial. Now since we have the d orbitals, there's room for 10 electrons, so our numerator is 10 factorial. We are filling it with 3 electrons, so our e is 3 factorial, and the number of holes is the number of empty spaces, spots where there aren't electrons, so that is going to be 7 factorial. And we can simplify this the following way. So we can think of 10 factorial as 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times 10. I'll divide it by, first we'll do the 7 factorial. So that gives us the terms 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to 7. Next, we have the 3 factorial part. We recognize that 3 factorial is 2 times 3. 1 is included, but since we, if you multiply anything by 1, it doesn't change it. It saves us the effort of actually writing out the 1. So now I notice that all the terms from 2 to 7 will cancel. So my numerator becomes 720. My denominator becomes 6. So this tells me that I have 120 microstates. Our next step is to derive all 120 microstates. And then we will use the information from the microstates to generate the term symbols for the D3 configuration. In the succeeding frames, we are going to show all 120 microstates for the D3 configuration. Note that across the top, in bold numbers from minus 2 to positive 2, we have the individual m sub l values for the individual orbitals. Each of the five horizontal dashes along one line correspond to one of the five d orbitals. The blue colored arrows represent an up electron and the red colored arrows represent a down electron. Here is the second set of microstates. Note that when we have two electrons in the same orbital, one is up, one is down. So one is going to be colored blue and one is colored red in accordance with the Pauli exclusion principle. Here are the third set of microstates for the D3 configuration. If the video does not give sufficient time to examine each one thoroughly, recall that you can pause the video and then continue it. Mm -hmm. 
here is the fourth set of microstates. Notice here that we can have both up and down spin electrons and them not be in the same orbital. The fifth set of microstates. Here is the sixth set of microstates for the D3 electron configuration. Here is the final set of microstates for the D3 configuration. Now, for each and every microstate, we need to tabulate the big M sub s and big M sub l values. We get those by adding up the small m sub s values and the small m sub l values. Note for the bottom line listed on page one here that we have three blue up electrons. Since an up electron has a m sub s value of one half, big m sub s is three times that value, which is equal to three halves. For the big m sub l, we add up the small m sub l values we see that those are equal to minus 1, 0, and plus 1. We can recognize that from seeing the uh, column heading for the individual blue electrons on the bottom line of our table. If we add those together, we get a value of plus 1 for big M sub L. So we notice to the right-hand side of the microstate that we have written down big M sub S equals 3 halves and big M sub L equals 1. We need to do this for each and every microstate in the entire table. For a second example of this process, we will do the same task for the bottom line of the current table. We notice that we have three red down electrons the small m sub s for a down electron is minus one half. So our big m sub s, the total of that is going to be minus three halves. For the big m sub l values, we notice that the electrons are in the minus two, minus one, and zero small m sub l columns. So that means we add minus two plus minus one plus zero, which gives us a total of minus three. Therefore, the value of big M sub L for this particular microstate is minus 3. And you'll notice that we've tabulated the M sub S and big M sub L values to the right-hand side of each of the microstates in the table. For the remainder of the 120 microstates, we will display the appropriate M sub S and M sub L values without describing the calculation in detail so that you can attempt these yourselves and then come back and check your work against the video. Here is the complete table for page one, showing the tabulated M sub S and big M sub L values. Here is page two with the big M sub S and big M sub L values tabulated for each microstate. Here is page three. Here is page four. Here 
Here we have page 5. Page 6. And lastly, page 7. Our next step is to create a chart with the big M sub S values along one axis and the big M sub L values along the other. We know which particular values to include in our headings from inspection of our microstate tables where we had tabulated the big M sub S and big M sub L values. For each microstate, we look at the big M sub S and big M sub L values and then go to our chart and make one tick mark at the intersection of the big M sub S column and the big M sub L row, corresponding to the big M sub S and big M sub L values for that particular microstate. So in our chart, we will have one tick mark for each microstate with that particular combination of big M sub S and big M sub L values. Here we continue the process of putting a tick mark into the chart for a microstate with the combination of big M sub S and big M sub L values. You will notice that there is a highly distinctive symmetry to the table and this can help us uh, determine if we might have inadvertently made an error in putting our tick mark in the wrong spot or having mistabulated the big M sub S or big M sub L value for a particular microstate. Here we take the microstates listed in table 2, page 2, and put the appropriate tick marks for the microstates into our table. Here we continue placing one tick mark into the chart for the microstate with the corresponding big M sub S and big M sub L values here for page number four. Here we have the appropriate chart entries for page number five. Page number six. Here we have the chart entries for page number seven, which brings our chart to completion. Be sure to tune in to part two to see more of the derivation of the term symbols for D3. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.